Born in 1938, Jerry West was the fifth of six children. His father, Howard West, was poor and drank heavily, often taking out his anger on his kids. Jerry's older brother, David, protected him. But when David was sent to the Korean War and was killed in combat, it made an already introverted and frail Jerry West even more withdrawn. Forbidden by doctors to play sports with other kids, he spent all of his time shooting an old basketball hoop in the neighbor's yard, practicing in any weather to avoid his father. In his freshman year of high school, Jerry was a bench warmer. But over the summer, he grew to six foot three and became one of the best players of his generation. He made the All-State team three years in a row and was named the West Virginia Player of the Year as a senior in 1956, averaging 32.2 points per game. With a smooth jump shot that he perfected in his backyard, he led East Bank to a state championship. Jerry chose to attend the West Virginia University, where he led the freshman team to a 17-0 record. His teammates noted that he was always alone with his thoughts and was very hard on himself. He never drank and went straight home after practice and poured all of his energy into basketball. His self-criticism made him practice even harder. During his junior year, he averaged 27 points and 12 rebounds per game, tying the NCAA five-game tournament record of 32 points per game. But West Virginia lost the finals by one point to California, marking the first of many gut-punching losses that West would endure throughout his basketball career. Despite the loss, Jerry was named the most outstanding player of the Final Four, an All-American, and the Conference Player of the Year. Jerry was then drafted by the Minneapolis Lakers, who soon became the Los Angeles Lakers. At 6'3", weighing 175 pounds, Jerry West was smaller, but he made up for it with his tenacity and defensive hustle. He broke his nose a dozen times during games, and he could jump 16 inches above the rim due to his athleticism. As a rookie in the NBA, Jerry averaged 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, earning the nickname Mr. Outside for his outside shooting, while his all-star teammate Elgin Baylor was Mr. Inside because of his unrelenting drives to the basket. Before Jerry West arrived, the Lakers had five straight losing seasons. Jerry West immediately boosted the team to 11 more wins and a playoff spot. However, they lost to the Hawks in Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals. In his second season, with Elgin Baylor serving in the Army, Jerry took charge, averaging 30 points per game. On January 17, 1962, West scored a career-high 63 points against the New York Knicks. Jerry West became known for hitting important late-game shots, and longtime Lakers announcer Chick Hearn named him Mr. Clutch. Jerry made the All-NBA first team and helped the Lakers to achieve the best record in the conference. In the playoffs, both he and Baylor averaged over 30 points per game, leading the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals, where they beat the Pistons in six games. In the NBA Finals, the Lakers faced the Boston Celtics, a team that would become Jerry's biggest challenge. The series was very close, with most games decided in the final minutes. Despite Baylor's record 61-point performance in Game 5, the Lakers lost Game 7 in overtime, 110-107. West averaged 31 points in the finals, and Baylor averaged 40 but it wasn't enough. Despite the loss, the Lakers came back stronger the next season. West averaged 28 points, 7 rebounds, and 5.6 assists, making the All-NBA first team again. LA defeated the Hawks to reach another NBA Finals, but would lose to the Celtics in six games. No one was more affected by these defeats than West. West held himself to extremely high standards, saying, I think I should make every shot. In 1964, Jerry West led the Lakers in scoring, averaging 28 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists, and finishing top 5 and shooting efficiency. Despite the dominance of big men in the league, West was one of the few players who could consistently make long-distance shots, even before the three-point line was introduced in 1979. However, despite West and Baylor's brilliance, the Lakers had a mediocre season and lost in the first round of the postseason. Determined and motivated, Jerry entered the next season on fire, averaging 31 points per game, the second best in the NBA behind the beast Wilt Chamberlain. He was also second in the league in true shooting percentage. The Lakers were favorites in the West Finals against the Bullets, but their hopes were dashed when Elgin Baylor suffered a career-threatening knee injury, just five minutes into their postseason run. Despite the setback, Jerry carried the team, scoring 40 points each game in the series, including a 52-point explosion in Game 2. The Lakers would go on to win the series in six games, with Jerry averaging a ridiculous 46.3 points per game. The feat was especially impressive without the benefit of a three-point line. The Lakers would make it to the finals yet again to play the Boston Celtics. Jerry was spectacular 
spectacular in the series, averaging 34 points per game. But without Baylor, they couldn't overcome the Celtics' six future Hall of Famers, as Boston would win the finals in five games, marking Jerry's third championship loss. For the 1966 season, Baylor returned from injury, but struggled, only putting up 16 points per game instead of his usual 30. Fortunately, Jerry West stepped up, averaging a career-high 31.2 points and leading the NBA with a 58% true shooting percentage. In the Western Conference Finals, West led the Lakers past the Hawks, averaging 35 points, 6 rebounds and 6 assists while shooting 53% from the field. In the Finals, the Lakers faced the Celtics yet again. Boston took a 3-1 lead in the series, but the Lakers fought back. Baylor scored 41 points in Game 5 for a win and Jerry's 32 points secured Game 6. But in the deciding Game 7, Boston held a 16-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Jerry, relentless as ever, helped the Lakers to close the gap, but they fell short, losing 95-93 to despite his 36 points. In 1967, the Lakers struggled, and after Jerry West's late-season injury, they were swept in the first round of the playoffs. In 1968, West recovered, and under a new coach with some key additions, the Lakers looked better than ever. They defeated the Bulls four games to one in the first round, and swept the Warriors, with West shooting an incredible 63% from the field. In the finals, they faced Boston again. After Game 4, the series was tied two games apiece, but Jerry injured his ankle. He wasn't at full strength for Games 5 and 6, and the Celtics capitalized, with six players averaging over 14 points. Boston's depth and Bill Russell's rebounding were too much for the Lakers. Despite West averaging 31 points per game, it wasn't good enough to win the series. Lakers general manager Jack Kent Cook was getting desperate, but an off-season addition finally put a smile on Jerry West's face. The league MVP, Wilt Chamberlain, was traded to the Lakers. Despite Chamberlain's rocky relationship with coach Butch Van Brander Koff, the Lakers won a franchise record 55 games. Jerry led the team in scoring and was their best player in the first two rounds of the playoffs. LA made it back to the finals with ease, where for the first time, the aging Celtics were the underdogs. Jerry started the final strong with a 53-point performance in Game 1, and after five games, the Lakers held a three games to two lead, but Boston forced a Game 7. The home team had won every game of the series, and everyone expected the Lakers to win the championship at home. The Lakers owner even put thousands of balloons in the rafters of the Los Angeles Forum. However, this display of arrogance fired up the Celtics, and it angered Jerry. Thanks to Bill Russell's defense and brilliant outlet passes, Boston killed the Lakers in transition, leading by 15 points after three quarters. Things looked bleak for LA, and when Chamberlain went down with a knee injury, another Boston title seemed inevitable. However, Jerry West fought back fiercely, and the Lakers closed the gap 103-102. to The Lakers coach refused to put Wilt back into the game due to personal issues, wanting to prove that he could win without Chamberlain. Despite West's triple-double of 42 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists, Boston survived and won the game by two points, as the balloons were never released. This was the first year the NBA handed out the finals MVP trophy, and Jerry won it, making him the only recipient of the award on a losing team. In the series, he averaged 38 points and 7.5 assists per game, scoring or assisting on more than 50% of the Lakers' points. Bill Russell praised Jerry, saying Los Angeles has not won the championship, but Jerry West is a champion. After the 69 finals, Bill Russell retired, leaving behind a legacy with more championship rings than fingers. Six of his 11 championships came at the expense of Jerry West, plunging Jerry deeper into depression with each loss. Before the 1970 season, the NBA unveiled its new logo, featuring Jerry's silhouette, earning him the nickname The Logo. Despite a rough start for the Lakers, with both Chamberlain and Baylor suffering serious injuries, Jerry led the Lakers to the number two seed in the conference. West led the NBA in scoring with 31.2 points per game and made the first team all defense. In the playoffs, LA won their first series in seven games. Jerry then dominated the number one seeded Atlanta Hawks, putting the Lakers back in the NBA finals, this time not against the Celtics. Without Bill Russell, the New York Knicks had the best record in the NBA and the league MVP, Willis Reed. LA and New York split the first two games and in game three, DeBusha hit a mid-range jump shot with only three seconds left, putting the Knicks ahead 102 to 100. The Lakers, without timeouts, only had time for a Hail Mary shot. Jerry West got the ball as he raced past Walt Frazier and threw up a 60-footer that miraculously dropped in. Later, Frazier said he could see the conviction in Jerry's eyes as he knew he was going to make the shot. However, without a three-point line, this shot only tied the game. In overtime, West sprained his left hand and the Knicks won 111 to 108. In Game 6, Jerry West injured his right hand and before Game 7, he had to get injections in both hands to play. Despite these injuries, 
injuries the Lakers were favored, especially with Willis Reed's injury. However, Reed famously returned to the lineup, inspiring the Knicks to win the game and creating one of the most famous playoff upsets of all time. In the 1971 season, Elgin Baylor ruptured his Achilles tendon and Wes injured his knee before the playoffs. Despite being short-handed, Wilt Chamberlain was still able to lead the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals, but there they were dominated by the young upstart Milwaukee Bucks, winning in five games. Before the 1972 NBA season, West, frustrated by the string of losses, contemplated retirement. However, when future Hall of Fame coach Bill Sharman joined the team, West decided to continue his career. Jerry, what's your opinion of your new coach, Bill Sharman? Well, Tom, uh, he is a stickler for conditioning. And, uh... I say we have had about four nightly workouts so far, and I'm kind of sore right now. The Lakers had a historic season, despite Baylor retiring due to his Achilles injury. The team embarked on an unprecedented 33-game winning streak, still an NBA record to this very day. They finished the season with at the time a league record 69 wins. Throughout the season, West had a change of role, becoming the team's point guard, where he averaged 26 points per game and led the league with 9.7 assists per game. In the postseason, Jerry became one of just five players in NBA history to lead in both scoring and assists. The Lakers defeated the Bulls and the Bucks, reaching the finals against the Knicks. Despite West's shooting struggles throughout the series, Wilt Chamberlain and Gail Goodrich's phenomenal play led the Lakers to finally win the NBA championship. Reflecting on his performance, West commented, I played terrible basketball in the finals and we won. It was particularly frustrating to win in this way because I played so poorly. I believe that winning would feel so much better. When I finally won the title, I asked myself, is that really all there is? to it. In 1973, the Lakers won 60 games and made it back to another NBA Finals against the Knicks. During the series, West strained both of his hamstrings and the shorthanded Lakers couldn't keep up with New York, who won the championship in five games. Entering the 1974 NBA season as a 36-year-old veteran, West still averaged 20 points, 4 rebounds and 6.5 assists per game. He left the game as the NBA's third leading scorer with an average of 27 points per game, which stands as the fourth highest among retired players. If he had played in the three-point era, he might have averaged over 30 points per game and would have won more championships. Jerry reached the finals nine times in 14 seasons, losing eight times, three of which came down to Game 7 in 1962, 1966 and 1969. Those three losses against the Celtics came down to a combined seven points. Is Jerry West a top three shooting guard of all time? Let me know in the comments below.